The Anderson Family. I don't see why you have to buy cowboy boots to wear in the mountains, Oliver. You have to wear them, Mary. Uh, if a snake strikes you, well, he, uh, he hits the boot instead of your leg. Well, what about me, Pop? I need them too, don't I? Well, not necessarily. The records prove that, uh, that snakes bite more men than children. I don't see why Junior can't have a pair of those boots. Because they cost $25. And he'd only wear them once. Oh, you're going to wear yours to work. How do you like it? Uh-oh, here we go again, folks. <laughs> started with the difference of opinion between Oliver and Mary about some cowboy boots Oliver bought for his vacation this year. It has finally been settled that the family will go to the mountains, but only after a struggle. The first thing Mary knew about the decision was when she was driving Oliver home from work. Well, I bought a tent this afternoon. A tent? Sure. Gets chilly up in those mountains after dark. Well, I don't see why we couldn't have just gone to the beach for a week. The beach? And get trampled to death? Oh, no. The mountains are the only place left where you can stretch your legs. What's in this box? This? Oh, uh, why, the fellow where I, where I bought the tent showed me a pair of cowboy boots, said I'd need them. Need them for what? Roping mountain goats? No, uh, for riding horses if we pack in. I don't know. The more I think of this mountain trip, the less I like it. Oh, you love it when you get up there. <sighs> the clear, cool air. What's in this large box? Oh, yeah, uh, just just a few things, a kerchief and a plaid shirt and a pair of chaps. Mm, sounds more like you're entered in a rodeo. Never mind, I'm going first class for once. Maybe I'd better pick up a few things tomorrow to wear up there. Pick up what? You just need slacks, and you have them, and you won't do much riding. I'd like to go first class, too, Oliver. Oh, I see. Now I'll hear that from now on. Well, I didn't want to go in the first place. Now, don't see any sense in going someplace you don't want to. Yes, Junior. Pop with you? Yep. Gee, what's wrong? Speeding again? Oop. Did you get the stuff, Pop? Yeah, most of it. I couldn't get a reel. Oh, I'd fix that. Butch Chapman has two reels, and he'll let me use one of them. Oh, that's fine. Of course, I had to ask him to go with us to get the reel. What? You mean you invited the Chapman boy to go? Well, sure. I needed a reel, so I made a deal. Well, you can unmake it. I'm not going to be responsible for anyone else on this trip. Of course, you can always go waiting, Junior. Hmm. Gee, it took me three hours to sell them on the idea, too. Well, look, Junior, I hope you see what I mean. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Gee, Pop, what's in the boxes? Oh, just a couple of things I'll need. Mm, that doesn't include a reel, either, Junior. It doesn't include a reel because I can't get one. Yeah, see what it is now. Gee, where's Pop? Cowboy boots. For me? Well, no. The man only had this one pair. You can wear them while your father sleeps, Junior. Oh, gee, Pa. I bought them because we might run across a snake. And these boots could save me from being bitten. A snake wouldn't strike a Junior, I guess. It's a known fact, Mary, that more men than children are bitten by snakes. And anyway, I want the variety. What's in this other box? Oh, just odds and ends, odds and ends. See, a kerchief for my neck. Red. Well, and this flannel shirt is plaid. Kind of corny, Pop. I don't care if it is. If those boots are too small for you, can I wear them, Pop? They're not too small. Uh, did you get any directions on how to get into them, dear? Oh, that's cute. Hand them to me, Junior. Here, Pop. Gee, red tops. Like a Russian dancer. No cracks. While your father gets into them, Junior, how about taking these packages out to the kitchen for me? Aw, oh, Mom, I want to see how Pop comes out. <clears throat> I'll come out all right. Go on, go ahead. Put on the whole outfit, Pop. I may do just that. Here, let me help, Oliver. They won't go on that way. Now, well, who is that? Go ahead, put them on. I'll answer the door. Oh, hello, Homer. Oh, howdy, howdy. Can I, can I come in, Mary? Of course. 
Oliver's in the front room. Yeah, yeah, you just saw him drive up. Oh, oh, Tomer, eh? Hi. Well, what on earth? Oh, oh, me cowboy boots. Well, sir, I remember one time I had... snake bites, Homer. Oh, they are, huh? Yeah. Oh, me cowboy boots. Let's see you walk in them. I will as soon as my feet stop burning. Uh... They are a little snug, Mary. I, I guess they need breaking in. Yeah, it looks like they need another inch on the end. Well, stand up, Oliver. Let's see how they look. I don't think I can. Maybe they are a bit small, but I can break them in. What's on your mind, Homer? On my mind? Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. See, see, I'm going to a club social this evening, and I can't find my hair stay. You, you got a little Vaseline I could use, Oliver? Why, sure. I don't think we have any, Oliver. You packed the lawnmower wheels with it. Well, then show them where the lawnmower is. I don't want no Vaseline out of a lawnmower. I don't sir. blame you, Homer. Um, how's Martha? Well, sir, pretty upset. Been talking to Mrs. Byers down the street. You haven't been annoying Mrs. Byers, have you, Homer? Nope, nope. Oh, he ain't never looked sideways at her. Uh, uh, junior around? He's out and back. What is it? You sure you won't repeat a word of it? Huh? Hey, what are we whispering for? I don't know. Well, sir, uh... Hey, if this got out, I'd be a dead duck. But uh, Martha and me is the only one what knows this. Mrs. Byers is getting sued for a divorce. Oh, Ooh. no. She's yep. a lovely woman. Yep, yep, that she is, Mary. Nice woman to talk to. <laughs> I thought you didn't look at her. Well, I ain't. I've been pouring cemented bridges for three days now. Uh, ain't been no place. Mm, yes, Briggs said you were working for him. He said you took more cement home in your ears than you poured in the farm. Oh, that ain't so. Taint so. No truth in that at all. <laughs> no, sir. Well, well. I guess I'll get on back home and just put some water on my hair. Or just keep your cap on all evening. Ooh, ooh. Oh, what's wrong, Oliver? Oh, these boots are killing me. Well, just sit down. We'll take them off. Yes, oh. sir. Ain't nothing worse than a pair of tight shoes. Well, I guess to get back home. Martha will think I've been telling you about Mrs. Byers. Well, don't worry about our saying anything, Homer. Oh, I know you won't. Uh, poor woman feel pretty bad if she thought anyone knew it. Tell me how you come out at the social, Homer. Yep, yep, sure will. I'm uh, going alone. Get the idea? Oh, 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 oh. Mm, Homer isn't careful. Martha may decide that Mrs. Byers is a good idea. Homer's too smart for that. Oh, oh, oh Mary, I can't oh. stand another minute of this torture. I have to get these boots off. Now what did Homer forget? Well, he probably wants to know where the lawnmower is. Oh, Mrs. Gonko, won't you come in? And stay but a minute, Mary. Oh, who is it, Mary? Mrs. Gonko, dear. Oh, uh, hi, Gertie. <laughs> What's he got to be so happy about? Vacations. Uh, come on in the front room. Hmm, new drape. Oh, new a couple of weeks ago. How's Gus? Oh, he's all right. Still working? He sure is. And am I glad of it. Yeah, I imagine so. It's probably a relief to stay home and not have to drive that bus anymore. That's no job for a woman, Oliver. Sit down, Gertie. Well, well, no, I, I thought you were alone, so... Oh, I thought I'd drop in and get your contribution for the flowers this year. Does she have to be alone for that? Well, no... But there was something else I wanted to mention. But this isn't the time to do it. Uh, Oliver, would you go out and see what Junior's doing? I will not. I can't walk. Oh, bending the elbow? No, tight boots. Is it about Mrs. Byers? Mrs. Byers? Why, uh, how did you know? <laughs> how did you? Well, I, well, of course, it's very much on the quiet. No one knows about it. I, I just dropped in to see Martha Meister. And no one knows it but Martha, Homer, Mary, you, and myself. And it's early in the day yet. Well, it's a good lesson to some of these husbands. I don't get the connection. Well, it just goes to show that women don't have to take the things they used to. Bravo, Gertie. You took it, Gertie. That's all <laughs> right. But my folks live 2,000 miles from here, and Gus never does get car fare ahead. <laughs> I'm no fool. I wonder what Mrs. Byers will do now. Okay, Mary, let Mrs. Byers solve her own problem. You know, Oliver, Gus and I were talking last night. And we couldn't see what Mary ever saw in you. I didn't know Gus ever got to talk. Very funny. <laughs> Very funny. Oh, come now. Let's not be children. Anything I hate is a flip and smug husband. Why, <laughs> Gertie, you're joking. No, I'm not, Mary. Well, if I bother you so much, why don't you go on your route down the street and explain to the neighbors about Mrs. Byers? Oh, Oliver, <laughs> what you'd expect from him, Mary? And I don't have to come here to be insulted. No, you can get that anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> 
And don't bring any more of those turkey raffle cards over here for us to punch with a lucky number home in your own pocketbook. That's all I want to hear. Just we'll take it up from here. And believe me, you'll be sorry. Oh, come now. You're acting like children. I'm not mad at you, Mary. But Oliver will certainly hear from this. Gus will be over this evening. You mean you let him out after dark? Oliver. Let her go. All she ever does is to run people down. Mm, now she'll never speak to me again. It should make you very happy. Oh, oh my feet. Well, why don't you just step them off, Oliver? Wait three minutes and they'll drop off. Oh, give up. Make Junior a present of them. Mary. Now, don't laugh. Hmm? But I can't get them off. Can't get them off? No. I think my feet have swollen in them. Oh, Brother, let me lie down a while. I have to get off my feet. Maybe I could just pull them off. Oh, 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 no, no, not now. Wait till they stop throbbing. Let me just lie down for a few minutes. Oh, brother, does it feel good to get off my feet? Mm, yes, the rest might do you good. I can't understand why you and Gertie Gunkel always have words. Oh, she's just a busybody, Mary. Mm. <laughs> Uh, there's enough trouble in the world without peddling it from door to door. Well, I'll pull the shade down a bit and let you have a short nap before dinner. Yeah, uh, so swell. Hmm. There. Now, just put your feet on this pillow. Oh, 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 wait, wait. I'll move them. Oh, they're burning up. Mom! Hey, Mom! I just spoke to Mrs. Gunkel and she didn't answer me. Shh, your father's taking a nap. What's wrong? Boots too tight. Oh, think I'll get them? I wouldn't be surprised. Now, come on out. Be quiet and let your father sleep. Uh, I feel I'm going to kill a plan. And now, back to the Anderson family. Oliver bought some very beautiful and expensive cowboy boots for a vacation trip into the mountains. It seems that he got the boots to fit just a little too soon. And on Mary's advice, and after much struggling, including a heated argument with Gertie Gunkel, Oliver has sought his cot for respite and refuge in a short nap. He has just fallen asleep. Sit on this chair, Oliver. I'll pull them off. Well, hurry up. Get a razor blade. Get the scissors. Cut them off. No, no. Just hold still. I'll yank this boot off first. Okay. Pull. Well, hang on now. <clears throat> wait, 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 wait. Stop. Oh! Oh, Oliver, I'm so sorry. I told you to stop. Let me get a hold of this door. Now, you pull and I'll kick. Okay. Got hold? Yeah. Yank while I kick. <clears throat> kick. Pull. You kicked me right in the eye. Huh? Right, you, oh. you brute. I saw you kick her. Oh. Well, in the eye. I, oh. I didn't do any such thing. I oh, just... Oh, my oh, eye. Man. You scoundrel. Huh? You should be in jail. Mary, don't you stay with this oh. person another minute. But, Gertie, oh. you know I, I, I oh, didn't mean yes, it. yes, I know. Come on, Mary. I'll send you my lawyer. We'll see if you have to stand for being kicked around. Stop in. Well, uh, get in quick before anybody sees you. Before anyone sees me, yes, I, I don't get it, Homer. Uh, how's Mary? Mary? Oh, oh, that. Oh, she's fine. Things like that never bother her. Uh, you mean she's used to being kicked around? Huh? Kicked around? Uh, look, Oliver, I'm your friend, and I always thought you was a pretty nice fella. Well, thanks, Homer. I just stood up to a band of wildcats if they'd have said one word again you. But Gertie's seen it with her own eyes. Oh, 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 so that's it. Yep, yep, me and Marthy's talked it over, and Marthy's a good woman. If she was home, I wouldn't dare let you in the house. But, Homer, you know me well enough to know I wouldn't do a thing like that on purpose. No, you wouldn't, eh? No. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Well, of course, sometimes a fella kind of loses his head, and before he noted, he'd done something terrible. But I don't think it was terrible. I was just... Yep, 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 I know, Oliver. We're entitled to her own opinion in them things. 
Why, the same thing happened when Marty and me was first married. Well, let's not go back that far. She took eleven dollars. I've been a saving for a corn sheller. Well, now that's different. There was money involved. No, don't make no difference. Money or no money. She took that eleven dollars and bought herself a new fall outfit with high button shoes, hat, gloves, dress, a coat, a petticoat. For eleven dollars? Uh, that's when a dollar was tough to get, son. Well, sir, when she walked into the house with the paraphernalia on and kind of leered me under a cheap veil hanging over her left eye, I, golly, I was waiting for her. What happened? I walked up to her and jerked her head off her head and pulled back my fist. And hit her? Well, uh, no, no, she swung first. Oh, oh but it just goes to show that a man ain't always to blame. Mm-hmm. I won't breathe it to her soul. Uh, huh? Listen. Marthy, Marthy, you coming up the steps. Yeah. Come on, quick, out the back way. Gee, I feel like a criminal. Come on, now, hurry, you know. I'll see you tomorrow sometime. After dark, now get... Good evening, Briggs. Lovely evening. Oh, and is it? Yeah. Is Mary Hope in the hospital yet? Hospital? Has she been in one? Don't you know? Or don't you care? What, what? Of course I care. Oh, oh, I presume you're speaking of Mary's eye. Why? Was something else kicked? Now, look. I don't know who told you about this, but it... Listen. Don't grab me by the shoulder. I don't have to take it from you. Baby will certainly see to it that you don't maul me around. I'm not mauling you. I just want you to wait a minute. Don't think you can go kicking people in the eye or, or choking them. I wasn't choking you. I, I merely touched your shoulder. Yes, but it's a short distance from my shoulder to my throat. And I've heard all about you. Till Mom can get settled someplace. Settled someplace? Well, she always liked it here, didn't she? Well, you can see why she couldn't stay on now, Pop. Yeah, I guess so. How is Mom? Pretty bad. Oh. Mrs. Gunkel is nursing her back to normal. Gunkel? Oh, oh, how can a person be normal around Gertie Gunkel? I just wanted to tell you, Pop, I, I think you're all right. Thanks. I think you're all right, too, Junior. I suppose no one took the time to explain it was an accident. No one explained anything, but I saw Mom's eye. Oh, well, from what I've heard, I didn't know she still had it. Of course, I'll I'll see every vacation, Pop. Well, well, that's swell. We'll have so much to talk about. Well, I guess I'll go see if I can help Mom pack. I don't think it'll do me any good to go down and talk to your mother. No, I don't think so. Mom was all right till everyone started phoning. Now she has to do something about it. Oh, you mean Gertie got on her bike again. Yeah, looks like it. Well, shake, Pop. We may get together at a later date. Well, of course. Uh, I'll be around somewhere. Now, don't you worry, Junior. Just be a good boy. I will. I'll take care of Mom. I'll try to get to see your mother before she leaves. I wish you would. I think she still likes you, Pop. Really? You think she'd... But don't get your hopes up. Gertie's taken over. Oh. Mary, how long is this thing going on? Leave that door open, Oliver. Open? Okay. Oliver, I hate to do this. You've been so lovely about everything. And we've been so happy. Now, you can see I could never hold my head up again after Gertie told everyone about this. 
and exaggerated it. Look, Mary, I'm going to see Gertie Gunkel right this minute. Oh, no, please, Oliver, please. She's I'm... not going to break up my home when it's half paid for. But she's sending her lawyer to see me. Well, we don't have to talk to him, Mary. Well, maybe it's best to just see what happens. Yeah, well, I'll tell Gertie to stay home nights and put as much effort into cooking as she does into gossiping, and Gus will know how it feels to be well-fed for once. I'll say to her, listen here, you troublemaker... I'm all through fooling with you, and from now on, look out. I heard that, Anderson. Huh? I heard every word of it. Where, where'd you come from? How'd you get in? The door was open, and I heard every word of it. I'm Mr. Gunkel's lawyer of the firm O'Brien, O'Brien, and O'Brien. Uh, my name's Bergman. Bird Dog Bergman, they call me. Oh. Uh, now, Mrs. Anderson, if uh, we could get some place where it's nice and quiet and private. Well, uh, Mr. Bergman, uh, maybe you'd better talk to my husband. Yeah. After what I just heard? Uh, not Bergman. I'm not interested in husband. Uh, Mr. Bergman, this is my husband, Oliver. I've met him. Well, well, well. So you're Mr. Anderson. That's right. You naughty man. Now, wait a minute. Did Gertie Gunkel send you here? That doesn't concern you, Mr. Anderson. I just want the poor young lady to sign a few papers, and O'Brien, O'Brien, and O'Brien will do the rest. Papers? Now, wait. I didn't call you. It happens that I'm representing the lady in the case. Uh... Say, Mrs. Anderson, could we have it sort of private in here? Now, look here. Mrs. Anderson doesn't really want a divorce, and she didn't send for you. That's the husband's side of it. And I'm prepared to take this to the highest court in the land. Uh, but, Mr. Bergman, maybe if we Don't, talk... don't, don't let him scare you, Mrs. Anderson. I know how you feel, but always remember this. From our long experiences in cases of this type, we find that once they kick him in the eye, they'll do it again. Oh, but Oliver didn't kick me on purpose. Uh, yes, but we got witnesses who say he did... I tell you, this man's unreliable, Mrs. Anderson. Now, I know we all hate to take this step, but why go through a living... Well, even just go through. Because, remember this, if he kicked you in the eye once, he'll do it again. I didn't kick her in... Ah, say, say, pardon me. Leave the room, will you, Sonny? By law, I'm entitled to privacy with my client. But I'm all right. I'm just sitting here. That's just what I'm objecting to. Now, look, Mary's not going to be bullied into something she doesn't want. Now, just a moment, my friend. The courts are full of your kind. Kick them in the eye and try to square it with a pair of ray and stockings. And where does it get the white? Where? Just another kick in the eye. Oh, Mr. Bergman, I don't know what to do. I'm so upset I can't think. Take it up with Oliver. I can't stand any more of this. She can't do this to me. Now, look here, bird dog. I know you came out here on legitimate business. I don't mind that. I know you're trying to make a living, and I don't mind that. But I do resent your telling Mary I'll kick her in the eye again. Now you have her confused. Listen, buddy. I know it's tough. We get these remorseful husbands every day. But they always come through after the bird is flown. Look, why don't you settle a few hundred bucks on her and give her a divorce and start over again? Hmm. Words don't seem to have any effect on you, bird dog. And if I could stand in these boots for just ten seconds, I'd run you out that door. Huh? You mean you can't stand on your feet? Well, 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 that's just fine. Because you ain't gonna like this. The little lady's going to get every dime you got. And don't try to come crawling back to her. Because remember this. Kick him in the eye once, and you'll kick him again. Get out of here. Come on, scat! I'll give you three to be out that door. Oliver, what a way to talk. Oh, you're back. I don't want to see me squirm. Quit kicking, Pop. And you can take Gertie with you. Oliver, wake up. Wake up, Oliver. It's Mary. Oh, Mary. Oh, well, where'd he go? Where did who go, darling? Bird dog. Wake him up, Mom. Oh, Oliver, wake up. Come on, snap out of it. Huh? Oh. Oh, oh it's Mary. Well, I've been trying to waken you for five minutes. Oh. Pick up those pillows off the floor. What's this bird dog business? <sighs> oh, brother, am I glad to see you. And Junior, do you look good? Gee, your dream must have been a dandy, Pop. Mm. You wake up so nice and chummy. Well, it wasn't pleasant, I can tell you that. Oh, oh, my feet. They're getting paralyzed. Oh, you poor man. Here, hold your foot up. Get hold of the heel, Junior. Mom, you shouldn't talk that way about Pop. Oh, quiet, Junior. It, now, pull. It's moving. Keep pulling. Mm. It's moving. Oh. oh, my eye. Pop, you kicked Mom in the eye. Well, do something. Help me pick oh. her up, Ma- Mary. Is oh. your eye cut? Oh. Hey, gee, someone at the door, Pop. Oh, at the door? Well, I can't oh, go. Oh, I, I can't see a thing. Quiet, Mary. Uh, Oh. Uh, Junior, you go to the door. A- and listen. Uh, what, Bob? If it's Gertie Gunkel or a fellow by the name of Bird Dog Goodman, don't let him in. The 
Anderson Family is written by Howard Swart, directed by Herbert Lytton, and featured Richard Lane as Oliver, Louise Arthur as Mary, and Walter Tetley as Junior. Herbert Rawlinson played Homer Meister. Others in the cast were Jenny Johnson and George Peroni. Sound was by Ray Erlenborn, music by Gordon Kibbe. Your announcer is Doug Young. The Anderson Family is a Hollywood broadcaster's production transcribed from Hollywood. Hollywood.